In this video, you will learn everything you need to know about the anatomy of the TFCC on MR imaging. First, we have to understand what the TFCC actually is. When we mean TFCC, we mean the triangular fibrocartilage complex. So it's the whole complex comprising all the different structures you can see here. It's first of all, of all the TFC, the discus proper, which is the triangular fibrocartilage discus that you can always see on your wrist MRIs. But the TFCC also comprises the radio ulnar ligaments. There you have a volar one and a dorsal one, the ulnocarpal ligament, the meniscus homolog, and also the tendon sheath of the ECU tendon. Now here on this schematic you can see the discus attaching at the radial rim here and then you have the two insertions the proximal lamina or proximal insertion into the fovea and then you have the styloid insertion onto the ulnar styloid then you have the meniscus homolog which is this structure here it looks kind of like a meniscus in some patients but it can have a variety of different different morphologies. So pay attention here. Sometimes it's big, sometimes you cannot really see it. It can be dark, it can be a little bit brighter on your sequences. So make sure you check it out, but don't overestimate any injuries here, especially if the rest is looking normal. Then you have the dorsal and volar radio ulnar ligament. We can see them in a minute in the MR. They are also attaching to this rim here of the distal radius. And then you have the ulnocarpal ligaments, and here are especially important the volar ones, and you can separate them into a ulnar lunate and a ulnar triquatral ligament. Then this is the ulnar collateral ligament, which is an enforcement of the tendon sheaf of the ECU tendon. The extensor carpi ulnaris tendon itself does not belong to the TFCC. Typically people think of the TFCC or the disc or something like this. You have this triangular structure and you have the dorsal and volar radio ulnar ligaments. But if you look closely on MR images, it looks more like this. You have this round structure here and the central portion here. And then from this round structure, you have the lamina inserting into the fovea and the ulnar styloid. The central portion here belongs basically also to the discus and in blue we have the dorsal and volar radio ulnar ligament. Now if you pronate or supinate your wrist, the position of the discus itself is gonna stay more or less the same, but what is moving are these insertions here. If you scan your patient with the wrist in supination, then on your coronal views you cut like this, you have partial volume effects for both of your laminas, especially the one to the ulnar styloid. So make sure you don't misinterpret this as a tear. You can easily say whether the exam is pronated or supinated by the position of the ulnar tip. If it's showing dorsally, the wrist is in supination. If it's showing volarly, it's in pronation. And if it's showing laterally, it's in neutral position. And you basically want to scan the patient in the neutral position so you don't have to fight with partial volume artifacts. All right, now this is more like a sagittal view. And you can see the discus in yellow again. It's thinning out in the middle. Then it's getting thicker. The most outer part of the structure is the radio ulnar ligament. So you have the dorsal one and the volar one shown here. And here, volarly, from the discus and also from the radio ulnar ligament, moving f more distally, you have the ulnocarpal ligaments. This one is the ulnotriquatral ligament, and you basically would have one moving more towards the lunatum. Now, let's have a look at a real MR scan here in this patient, and we start off with the coronal view here. Let me just scroll through from dorsally to volarly. So let's start off with the discus proper. You can see the discus is this structure here and it's not inserting into the bone as you might think. It's actually inserting into the cartilage. So this is normal, it's not a tear, especially if you have your fluid sensitive sequences. It's a little bit brighter here, which is perfectly fine. So the discus, and then we have the two lamina, one 
down to the fovea and the one to the ulnar styloid tip. They are both intact here. Normally it's a little bit brighter in between, it's the ligamentum subcurrentum, it's not a tear, unless you have contrast material in here, if you do arthrography, it's considered to be normal. If we go dorsally now, at some point this black structure is inserting into the bone. Then at this level you're no longer looking at the discus, so this is the dorsal radio ulnar ligament. The same is true for the volar radio ulnar ligament. As soon as the cartilage is going away and this structure is inserting into the bone itself, you have the volar radio ulnar ligament. This here is the meniscus homolog. It's kind of a black structure, not really meniscus like in this case. And typically the lateral ulnar collateral ligament and the ECU tendon, this is the ECU tendon, they are not well depicted and not so important. To find the ulnocarpal ligaments, you can scroll on your coronals volarly and you can see this band like structure here. It's looking like a V shape. So this one is the ulno triquatral ligament this one, tuck, tuck, and this one is the ulnolunate ligament. They are better depicted on your sagittals where you have the discus. It's thinned in the middle as I, show, as I have shown you before. You have the dorsal and volar radio ulnar ligament and then from the discus going distally you have the ligament, the ulnocarpal ligament here, this structure there. There it is. Should be inserting here. And this is not a ganglion cyst, this is the pisotriquetral recess. It can be quite large and should not be mistaken as a ganglion cyst. Now let me show you on the axials how the discus actually looks like. So here you can see this black round structure that's the discus and it's a little bit thinner here that's why it's brighter because you have some partial volume effects going on here and this is one of the lamina onto the ulnar styloid tip this one so if you scan only like this you might mistake this one as a tear so let me show you this here so if you only look at this image you might see okay we have this one the foveal attachment is fine but this one is not going to the tip and you might think that it's torn, but actually it's a partial volume effect because it's going through different sections here and it's perfectly normal. Well, that's all for today. So I hope you learned something and if you like the content that I do, hit that subscribe button and also the like button. And if you want to support me on a more personal level, check out my Patreon page. You can find the link down in the description. See you next week.